everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at BrickCon Seattle 2022, and I'm in the middle of the great ball contraption layout. There's a number of builders that have put in a ton of work to get this all set up, so we're going to be taking a whole tour here. If you want to introduce yourself and tell us what we have here. Hi, John. I'm uh, Neil Snowball out of Vancouver, British Columbia, so I'm down here for uh, the weekend on the GBC. we got about eight to ten builders. We're currently running something like 50 modules, plus or minus, with a, a loop time of about 12 minutes. So uh, it's been pretty consistent for the, the last few hours. So yeah, I'll run you through the various modules. We're gonna start off with a, a section of John Sherman's builds. So we've got his, uh, I don't know what this one's called. The macaroni stair. Yeah, look, so, I love the use of the macaroni pieces there. Absolutely, it, uh, and especially the, the styling with the bright colors really makes them pop, which is something that John does very well. You're gonna see that for these first few modules. They're very, uh, very attractive as well as functional. So we come into a, a serpentine lift. This is one of John's classic modules into uh, a set of the, uh, the Akiyuki uh, downward. We've got a side-to-side -side stepper that uh, comes up and drops into um, an oscillator running across to one of John's uh, really big serpentine lifts, which is the, the big yellow piece with all the, uh, the Technic breadboards in there. Tons of uh, gears running on the back Absolutely. here as well. Absolutely. For those who don't see it on the back side, it is just one long gear <laughs> chain driven from the middle. So uh, for us on the GBC side, we'll look at that and... Uh, it's a, always quite exciting to see a long uh, gear chain of that nature. This is the kind of thing that gets GBC builders excited. <laughs> it is, it is. And when it runs well, that's the main thing. Is we see it and we go, that's running perfectly rather than, oh, what's gonna go wrong? So yeah, as we move on to, uh, from the serpentine build there, we've got uh, a large multicolored stepper module. This is a, a stacked stepper, so it's quite compact into a spiral descent. And uh, over there, we move on to the, the blue and white handover module. So this is uh, handing off one-to-one -one in, uh, in the spiral. Very R2-D2 uh, yes, vibes yes, here. Yes, it is. And that's true. It is very, uh, very R2-D2, which means that John needs to build a gold one next to it to get the C-3PO vibe. So there's your challenge for next year, John. Okay, moving into... A basic conveyor. The interesting thing about this conveyor is that it's only lifting the ball with a single telescope on the conveyor lift and using the side wall to brace it. Whereas you'll see on most of the other conveyors, it's using a pair of those telescopes to lift up and flip over. So uh, a little bit of innovative thinking on that module. And then a helter skelter fall all the way down. It's got uh, a number of drops. So this is actually a ball counter. And I'm trying to work out what we've got. We've got one, two, we're at about three to 400. Oh, we're one down the bottom, so we're at, at least 10,000 balls so far. <laughs> so yeah, that ball counter will keep counting the, uh, the balls going through the loop for us. And then it eventually will tip out into the bottom when we get to the next 20,000. So that moves into the pusher-upper, a, a classic module that's been kicking around for a while, nice and reliable that uh, is pushing over to a set of stacked wheels. Those stacked wheels, again, another classic build that uh, a lot of us have, uh, have got that are always nice and reliable and, uh, and work well. Here we are we've, at the top of the stacked wheels, end of John Sherman's module, we've got a couple of, uh, of down ramps that are exiting to Kevin Mitchum's section. Here, nice and straightforward, starts with a, a very easy, slow conveyor lift running into a Christmas-themed side-by-side stepper lift. What do we have sitting out front here? Sitting out front is the, the usual detritus of, uh, of modules that are uh, either failing or not quite uh, there yet. This is uh, a pusher-upper. You'll see a few of these around. They're a great module, a little bit uh, temperamental at times. They really struggle with uh, large volumes of balls, so we tend to put them in for a while pull them out afterwards when uh, they get overwhelmed and we managed to repair the, the module that it should have been in there in the first place. So after this Christmas themed module we got uh, Kevin's little uh, water river stepper module. Great use of the little silver fish in there. Absolutely, it's very uh, 
very mesmerizing using the different colored cheese slopes as well. It's a simple idea, but looks great. Here we go into, uh, into a Soleil pusher. Nice and uh, simple module that just keeps rolling through. Uh, moving on to a nice uh, vertical conveyor that uh, is that there's a very banana theme going on with this one I noticed <laughs> with the monkeys and the uh, the banana guy. One of the the cool things about this one, if uh, if you look at the back, that uh, it's actually got a quick release uh, mechanism on the motor, which can actually pull out and disable it. So if it uh, if it runs the wrong way, it'll pop out and uh, isolate the module. Moving on to another little side-by-side -side stepper, it's the compact side-by-side. -side. This uses a technique that I love, which is the clear pieces out front, and it's always great yes. to be able to see more of what's happening. We, we love to buy as much of the clear stuff as we can so we can see what's going on, uh, partly for us, because <laughs> when you can't see what's going on inside, you start to panic if it's going wrong, and uh, you know it's always good to see for the, uh, for the public to see what's going on inside as well. So again, we got a series of steppers coming up. So we got uh, we're running from that side by side into a little fire stepper, and then a, a large capacity stepper module here. We're running nice and slowly, but uh, consistently, and that's feeding into a couple of uh, rotary lifts that uh, Kevin has got stacked on top of each other to uh, to get a bit of verticality. And we can see it's having a bit of trouble there, kicking a few balls out. As, uh, as normal for uh, for GBC. All right, moving on, we've got uh, coming into a ball pump. So this is a different uh, a different mechanism than the one a lot of people use, which is the brick world ball pump. So this is using a side by side pumping action to uh, to pump the balls up the uh, the tower there, feeding out to another conveyor. Running in the background here is. Uh, We've got is Kevin's blue ball contraption. So this uses an, a mix of uh, Zamo spheres and standard uh, Lego GBC balls, and it filters the blue balls out and will allow the uh, the Lego balls to go through the the system. Obviously pulled out of the line right now. It's been a little temperamental today so far, so uh, we're just letting it run to uh, get some of the bugs out for now. Okay, so yep, another conveyor lift with uh, with a controlled exit, and that is running into a pair of pusher modules here. Two different, uh, slightly different arrangements on uh, how the gearing mechanism is working for them, but they're uh, they're in there just cranking away all day today, which is what we like to see. Nice, a couple of nice reliable modules. And then as we, uh, as we get to the end of those, we're coming into Alex Papil's modules. So we've got his uh, tilting lift module that's counterweighted. And then that is feeding into the glittering wheel. We love to bring this one out. It's such a nice, uh, a nice module for the, the public to see that it's just sitting, rolling along, lifting the balls up and uh, feeding them out with such a nice, uh, a nice amount of clear brick to go with it. It, uh, it really catches the light. Yeah. Once again, a great use of those uh, kind of like one by two clear bricks and a great great example of the brick bending technique. It's exactly, yeah, to get that brick bending. And uh, and the wheel is just sitting there, so it's not attached to anything. It's just sitting on a set of rollers at the bottom as it goes round. So it's, uh, it's somewhat stable, but obviously it's not attached to anything. <laughs> Third section of the uh, the display today is my uh, my loop. So I've got a, a simple rainbow stepper to start with, uh, high capacity, nice reliable module, into what I call the half pipe. So there's a couple of snowboarders that uh, it's a sweeper module, but the snowboarders are on a, a rotary and planetary gear system, so they get to spin as the module goes round. That's super cool. So it uses like rubber bands there to spin the snowboarders. Yes. Yep. So it just keeps them uh, keeps them going round. They're doing tricks as they uh, they get the aerial going over the top, and then back down into the uh, the bottom of the half pipe to uh, to go from there. So that's feeding into a little uh, workshop module one conveyor lift to feed into a set of the Akiyuki fork to fork, 
that is currently misbehaving a little bit, as you as we're seeing. But despite the fact it's been working fairly well this morning, off and on, but it's one as made see, it, one made it, one made it, <laughs> and yet two minutes ago it was a complete nightmare, and we've had to uh, fix it up. So, yep, as as all good Akiyuki builds are, they take a lot of maintenance and care to get them to uh, to start working well. That's feeding into another little workshop module. Uh, Vertical lift, which goes into hiding behind the uh, behind the um, Angry Bird stuff, is we've got the workshop module from Bricks by the Bay from this year, this little grey thing, and then that goes into the what I call the GB tree, which is actually a Brick World ball pump, completely uh, dressed up to look like a tree. So it's using a couple of uh, spiral ramps as a double helix. So this one actually has a function in it that uh, if we turn the handle at the top, we can go from forward motion to recirculation and it'll just keep going round and round on itself. Really useful for the panic that we may have downstream. So uh, right now it's doing pretty good. So we keep keeping it in forward motion. And uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of uh, Angry Birds stuff's going on around there. We get into Emmett's crane, a nice simple crane, uh, crane lift module. And that's cranking away, going into the Brick Slopes 2022 workshop module. Another really nice, uh, simple module, but it works pretty well. It's, and it's so cool to see so many different conventions represented in these layouts because all so many conventions now have those workshops and everything, so you can represent yes. them. And that, that's a great thing, is we all share those instructions, yeah. and uh, it's good to get them mixed up and shared amongst the community. And that's going into yet another version of a workshop module, which is the uh, the Brickworld Tipper module. This is uh, my extended version to give it a bit more capacity. Um, that's going into my carrot patch module, which is all about the rabbit attacking the uh, the carrot production facility. So we got some uh, some carrot guys trying to fend the rabbit off. Carrot troopers. <laughs> yep, it's all important when uh, when you've got carrots. And there's a lot of theming going on for this one. It's all about what. Uh, what the kids can see and uh, and not see. So there's a control room, and uh, from this side, you've already noticed, and we've got a guy oiling the gears and a dead carrot and all sorts of things going on. So that feeds into the, I think it's the tallest module here. This is called the Leap of Faith. It's uh, currently at about four feet tall. So it's a vertical lift, nice and simple, but it goes into a free fall drop, and it's dropping about three feet or so Onto uh, onto a pool. It's a pretty uh, pretty accurate hit. We're hitting the net that's inside the pool about 90% of the time, um, but it does put a lot of uh, a lot of impact on it, which you can hear the the really loud noise coming on that hit, and then drop just controls it, drops it down into a nice little uh, little reliable module, a whirly gig that spins round and uh, put a couple of balls in. That's feeding over into what I call my forked over module, which uses a, a variation of the Akiyuki forks, but in a vertical configuration to pick up and lift over the top. I love this module. It is massively, uh, un I want to say unreliable, unpredictable is the better word. Sometimes it's great and then can work for hours and others it's just going to be a complete nightmare. So that drops into um, one of Matt Norman's little modules uh, that is very reliable, so it's uh, a really good uh, stable module for uh, running in here. Going into the final one of mine, which I call the Raven. This is uh, obviously a bird-themed module that's simple conveyor. It also has a linear actuator on the conveyor item, which if I was getting it to work, it's on uh, Power Functions Infrared. I can actually control the tilt of the uh, the head of the Raven into uh, the next module, but this one's been misbehaving on the Power Functions today, so I've just given up on trying to get the infrared to work. So that rolls into a series of push-arm modules by Josh Gay. So we've got push-arm module one, a little vertical lift, and then, as you can see, as we go on to the next table, another pair of push-arm modules rolling into uh, into the next table of modules. The last of the push-arm modules that we've got in here that's feeding in uh, a series of modules by some new builders at, uh, at BrickCon this year. 
We got uh, Michael and Brian Connolly who've brought a, a bunch of their uh, GBCs, got into it as uh, as a result of being uh, homebound in the pandemic, which a lot of us did. We all got really into building more and more modules for the pandemic. So we've got uh, starting with a, a large ball pump and a series of uh, slides that's going down into module two, another step module that. Uh, you know, we all like the stepper modules. They're uh, they're nice and uh, easy to theme. Great then, mix of colors all throughout these. Yes. Yeah, very nice and colorful to stand out. Uh, you can see them across the room, which is uh, always a good thing for drawing people in to, uh, to see what you're doing. So we, this third module, we've got a, a pair of conveyors. So not something you see very often is uh, one conveyor and a transfer and a second conveyor to uh, get the elevation. So that's a nice little uh, change on what we would normally see from the GBC builders. And that's going into a Helter Skelter cheese wedge uh, downslide that drops into um, another wheel lift. So the wheel lift, that's... Uh, is the wheel lift yours? No, no, this is, this is came in to replace one we're re doing hot swap repair. Right. So th yep. this was our backup over here on the table. So yeah, as you can tell, we got a lot of, a lot of uh, maintenance going on on this side of it that the wheel lift is then feeding into another little ball pump and ramp. The, uh, the ramp feeds into uh, another brick slopes module. So this is last year's brick slopes module. Another... Uh, Another stepper module, but very reliable. Uh, the design has been uh, great, and it just sort of churns away and cranks away all day. And that's feeding into a really lovely, um, a lovely model here that uh, is using the the short stepper effect to get that sort of wavering pattern, but really nicely themed and uh, and very visible. And then we're moving into Jeff Strong's build. Some of you may have seen this uh, previously at Bricks Cascade, where Jeff debuted it. He took all the lessons learned from Bricks Cascade, took them away, and has improved it to bring it back here at uh, at BrickCon. So, uh, yep, Jeff's got a uh, new input feed on this, going into a serpentine lift, and then a beautifully themed set of downward ramps. Check out the... Uh, the octopus and the kraken at the bottom there, which is run completely separately from the rest of the, the module. So Jeff has a, a mechanism just to make the arm of the uh, the kraken move. That is so cool. So it's like a micro scale, like landscape, city, bridge, and then the whole kraken. Absolutely, yeah. It, these are the things that uh, that we like. The, the two, the, sort of the two polar sides of GBC, which is the highly technical, and that's where John Sherman really excels in his very highly technical, beautiful builds. And then we've got the, the highly themed builds that, uh, that draw the public in for a completely different reason. They see the, the aesthetic aspect of it and the, the storytelling. And those two together are what really, uh, really help us on the GBC side of things to, to be more inclusive to the, uh, the audience that we have. Because not everybody is wholly sold on just the mechanics. The story is something that brings a lot of the kids in uh, and catches their eye. Okay, so that's feeding into a few of Don Sinclair's modules. We've got a, uh, a drum lift that uh, is rolling here. And you'll notice the drum lift also has uh, a back feed on that in case it jams. The drum lift rolls into a couple of... Uh, Simple modules, we've seen some of these before. A lot of these little conveyors with the input ramp are kicking around that, uh, that we've all picked up from various uh, shows. A really, uh, a really classic version of the big brick world ball pump with the, uh, the ladder exit that uh, was on the original design. And then another brick world uh, stepper module that is rolling into the final module we have here, which is our up and over to allow us to get in and out of the, the GBC area. Otherwise, we'd all be crawling on the floor. In the BrickCon colors here as well. Yes, yeah, very much so. That uh, Those primary red, blue, and yellow colors that uh, we see everywhere. So that's our GBC loop today. It's uh, It's been pretty good, I'd say, 50-ish modules and uh, a, a good group of builders that uh, all meet together because we're all at 
all the Pacific Northwest shows that uh, we're used to working together on these, which is uh, very helpful. That is fantastic, and this, this final bridge spans quite a large area here. Yes. It seems like it's wider than a lot of the bridges we see. Yes, and, uh, and thankfully tall enough for us all to get under. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, because it's extra wide, we don't need to worry so much about trying to squeeze through it. We've been able to sit it nicely on the tables and, uh, and have a bit of uh, space underneath. This is super cool. Thank you so much for taking us through the whole loop here. Where, where else will you have uh, some GBC modules set up in the future? Any other conventions and shows planned? Uh, the next one for all of us is going to be Brick Can at the end, sort of third week of April next year. And then we'll, uh, we'll all be in Portland after that for uh, Bricks Cascade. And you'll see some of us in, uh, in various places, including Brick Slopes. Um, hopefully we'll be at Brick World as well for a, a number of us. I try to get to quite a few of them. Pick up, I like to pick up all the workshop modules and then bring them back to the uh, Pacific Northwest so we can, uh, we can really share the, uh, the modules and, uh, and learn from them. That's right. We've we got, we got to show some love to Canada as well with Brick Can. So, so a great Absolutely. show up there in, in April, as you said. So anyone watching, that'll be kind of the next big convention that you're at in April of 2023, right? Correct. Yep. April, uh, third weekend of April 2023. And uh, there will be... A similar size GBC loop there. They, it's generally all the same builders. We're, uh, we're all in this area. But anybody else who wants to join us, we, we always are looking for more people to do GBC. It, come on down and hang out with, uh, with the, the GBC nerds. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you so much for taking us through everything. You're most welcome. It's uh, glad to have you here.